So today I want to talk about the relationship between your mood and your food. There's a huge relationship. The problem is that you never, ever, 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 ever want to treat a symptom directly without understanding the underlying cause. And that's the problem in medicine is they treat all the symptoms. So if you get depression, they're going to treat it. They don't ask why. Anxiety, it's a treatment. There's a lot of pills. There's no profit in curing these. It's all about managing these symptoms. In fact, when you treat the symptom or you diagnose incorrectly, you make the patient worse. I'll give you an example. I had a patient who was depressed and I said, when were you when were you depressed? He goes, when I was diagnosed. I said, interesting. I said, I started questioning more stuff and I said, you know what? You're not depressed. You're just exhausted. She goes, wow, that makes sense because I don't sleep. I feel better. Thank you. So I got rid of her depression just by helping her realize the underlying cause. Okay? So let's talk about this. There's a couple of factors in, uh, in the relationship to infecting your emotional mood and the food that you eat and other things. Let's talk about nutrition's, nutrition first. You ever hear the concept, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Well, that might have been true in 1965, but not now. It takes six apples a day now to keep the doctor away if you take the apples and shoot them hard enough at the doctor. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But the point is that it, their soils are so bad right now, you need so much food to achieve the same nutrient levels. In Europe or in Africa, the food um, nutritional uh, factors are so much more that that's why they have good teeth, good bone structure, because they have more nutrition in the soils. So the soils are bad in America, thus the food is empty, so therefore you need to eat even healthier. Let's just take potassium. It's one of the most important minerals in uh, a good, relaxed body, because potassium is a physiological tranquilizer. It calms the nervous system down. And you might say that you eat a banana a day. Well, that's 400 milligrams. You need 4,700 milligrams just to get your minimum. So that would equate to about seven to eight to even 10 cups of vegetables or salad every single day. How many cups of vegetables are you eating every day? So potassium is very, very important for two reasons. To calm the heart rate down, because if your potassium is low, your pulse rate is going to go high. Try to sleep with your pulse rate just going boom, 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 boom. It won't let you relax. So potassium is very important to calm the heart down. It's also important to establish good blood sugars and even to help stabilize the sugar so they don't drop down too far. We'll get into that in a second. But I want to just talk about the nutrient factors, B vitamins especially B1. B vitamins are used up when you're in a stress state. So when you're pushing your body and you're stressed out, um, you're going to deplete your B vitamins, especially B1 and some of the other ones. When you deplete B vitamins, you become more anxious. You have that internal, that restlessness. Restless leg syndrome, for example, is a B vitamin deficiency. The best source of B vitamin it would be nutritional yeast. So go to the health food store, get nutritional yeast, take a teaspoon. I like to put it in plain yogurt, put it in your kale shake, whatever. But those B vitamins are very, very, very important to actually calm you down and help you sleep and prevent nightmares as well. But don't buy them from a one-a-day vitamin. Most of these vitamins out there are synthetic and you don't want to consume synthetic vitamins. You want them food-based. Uh, I have one called Super Nutrients that I use because it has good cognitive function. It's all food-based. There's no synthetics. And you could take probably three of those and get enough B vitamins if you wanted to do that. It's called super nutrients. Calcium. Calcium is important to help you relax, calm down, and reduce stress. When you're under stress, you deplete your calcium. Calcium goes through you. You don't really absorb it as well. So calcium, the best source, is not from um, a typical one a day or some of the calcium supplements they sell at CVS because all those are made from calcium carbonate. That's limestone. You'd be better off chewing on the cement outside. Um, and I won't mention any brand names that use calcium carbonate, <coughs> Centrum Silver, but a lot of these top name brand calciums, they basically use uh, rocks, which don't absorb. So you need a calcium citrate or have it from cheese or have it from plain yogurt, something like that. Okay, Omega-3, very, very important in cognitive function and even especially for children. So omega-3 fish oils for kids, oh my gosh, huge. But the problem is that there's something fishy about fish oils and that would be 
that it's usually rancid. So get a higher quality fish oil rather than just kind of like the cheapest brand that you can find. Get a good one and open up the capsule and smell it. And if it's not fishy, it might be, it's probably pretty good. So if you're going to go with fish oils, make sure it's a higher quality. Um, okay, so that's one thing. And then I want to talk about iodine. When a child is growing or when you're nursing or when you're going to have a baby, make sure that you consume enough iodine as a, from a sea, uh, sea kelp source. I like sea kelp, that's the best source of iodine, and, and like especially pregnant females and things like that because iodine supports the thyroid. Children that are mentally retarded usually have an iodine deficiency because the mother was deficient and it transported over to the baby. And I even know some adults that are mentally retarded as well because they don't have enough iodine. Iodine supports the thyroid, the thyroid helps the cognitive function of the brain, but I like to have it from a food base, not a synthetic or like a rock, so take it from sea kelp. Next thing, blood sugar is very, very important. If your blood sugar is not perfectly level at 100, if it goes too high, you're going to get brain fog. You're going to have loss of memory. When the blood sugars go down, you're going to have irritability, ADD, uh, you're going to be edgy. So just from blood sugars. So the blood sugar relationship to between cognitive function on a physical level, it's, it's huge. It's very, very important. I used to have brain fog, fog all the time. And then one day, I started to change my breakfast from a carbohydrate cereal to a protein breakfast. I think I was having buffalo burger or even a piece of fish. And then I went to eggs. Oh my gosh, I felt so much better, I, like, a, like a helmet lifted off my head. So you want to make sure your breakfast is protein because that actually stabilizes the blood sugars through the whole day. If you skip a meal, skip breakfast, or have a carb breakfast in the evening, you're going to have low blood sugars. Now, having low blood sugars doesn't mean you're, you should eat more sugar. It just means that you didn't set it up where you have good protein in salad or vegetables and that potassium to stabilize your sugar. So when your blood sugars drop down, have a salad, have some don't eat sugar. That's not going to fix it. And so we want to make sure that we don't eat sugars because it's going to spike and then come down. You're going to end up with a low blood sugar and then you're going to get irritable. So the bottom line is you have to avoid sugar. Okay? Seven cups of salad. We talked about potassium. will help stabilize your blood sugars and it's great for diabetics. Protein breakfast, very, very, very important. That kale shake. You can get the recipe off the website. Kale shake in the morning is wonderful to establish the blood sugars through the whole day. Hormones. Hormones influence your brain as well. Serotonin. Uh, it's a pleasure hormone and that's how psych drugs work too. They recycle that last drop of serotonin you have over and over and over again, tricking your body and thinking it has more than it really does. So when you take these uh, psych drugs, they end up causing a deficiency over the time even more and the need for that medication rises over time. So it doesn't have a long-term good solution. And sometimes when the doctor doesn't have a plan to get you off the medication, then you end up needing more and more and more and different ones and to the point where it really ruins the body. So you want to start building up serotonin with a good diet before you even get these symptoms. Now, next thing is cortisol. That's the stress hormone, and that comes from all types of stress. Um, you push yourself over the years. You work two jobs. You don't sleep. Uh, maybe you don't take care of yourself, maybe you party too much, and you go into the flight or fight mode and you will get anxiety as a symptom from cortisol. So anxiety, worry, uh, thinking all the time, that's a higher cortisol, adrenaline type, adrenal problem which needs to be improved through natural means. One of the ways is through walking each day, through maybe acupressure, stretching, pulling the stress out, or sleeping or keeping the diet good, or avoiding stressful people, many, many things you can do. But if your body is stressed out all the time, your cortisol will be high and you will be stuck in anxiety. But the problem is you don't want to treat it directly, you want to find out why. PMS, is there a relationship between your cycle and your mood? If so, then you need to support the ovary because I know some women that can get very irritable that time of the month, or even certain times of the month, if there's a pattern to it. Thyroid, the thyroid, if it's a physical problem, you, you can get depression, you can be apathetic, um, like you don't care anymore. So there's the hormone aspects to your mood as well, 
that should be supported through nutrition. Okay, so now we want to talk about sleep. Oh my gosh, without sleep, <clears throat> you're going to have a lot of anxiety, you're going to have worry, you're going to be in stress mode, because sleep is a natural a repair for, for body stress. Without sleep, you can't rejuvenate, you can't recharge the body, and you will have all sorts of mood issues without sleeping. You try to take your kids to the grocery store when they're tired. They're going to be cranky, okay? So, um, and the question is, are, are you exhausted? Are you tired or are you depressed? I found mostly you're tired and you're going to feel depressed from being tired. So you don't want to take a five hour energy drink to stimulate the body. You want to get more sleep. So the more stress you're under, the longer you need to sleep. So don't get seven, get eight hours, okay? So a lot of problems with anxiety it can't happen when you sleep. Okay, so take a look at the relationship between your mood and the physical part of your body versus just a mental problem, and it's huge, and this is what's missed. So if you're having any type of mood problems, look at the nutrition, look at the blood sugars, look at if there's a glandular imbalance, look at your sleep, and never treat a symptom, find the root cause.